Hey everyone, my name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. If you guys like commodity investing or value investing, click subscribe. You'll make a bunch of money uh, following this channel. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this content. One of the things that I think is important to understand when investing is technical trading. I'm gonna go over some of the basics. I kind of threw this together pretty quick so you guys can see it when I show you chart updates during market updates. So I'm gonna go through this presentation. It is very basic. I also released one previously in a video called Momentum. I'll link that in the description below. Uh, that is a little bit more advanced, but this one is the basics. So I'll jump into this presentation on the basics of technical trading. So technical trading part one, uh, technical trading should fit into your investment strategy. That is obviously my opinion. Going long is an asymmetric bet compared to shorting a stock. Just keep that in the back of your, uh, of your mind. You can short a stock, but the most you can make shorting a stock is 100% if it goes absolutely to zero, which it probably won't. Going long, you can make many multiples of your original investment, which makes it an asymmetric bet. So just keep that in mind. Value and market conditions are what drive stocks higher long-term. If you're gonna invest long-term and use technical trading, you have to understand value and market conditions for these trades to work. You can't rely solely on technical trading and be as successful as you, as you would in, in incorporating value and market conditions. At least I haven't been. Technical trading can fine tune your entry points and this is what I use it for. So first you must understand the basics of candlestick trading. So I'm gonna show you a chart here and I'm gonna show you this, uh, just a couple of moving averages. What this is is a candlestick chart. These are all individual days right here and they're called candlesticks. Each candlestick, if it's green is an up day, if it's red, it's a down day and if it's a black, um, if it's black, I'll, I'll show you that later but I, I'll go over each candlestick here. But I just wanted to show you here, this is a 25 day moving average. There's a 50 day moving average and there's a 200 day. Some charts only have a 250 day. This one has a 25 day just to show you that when these cross, sometimes you can say, hey, look, this is getting bullish. Now we're in an uptrend bullish here when they all cross. Just showing you the moving averages. Now, a moving average, when you, when you say a 200 day moving average, what this blue line is, is it takes the previous 200 days. So if, if this is right here, you go up and you add 200 days and it takes an average of these 200 days and it plots it right here on this line. And if this is continuing to move up, eventually the moving average will move up with it. That's all it is. It's just a moving average of the past 200 days. So next, this is a candlestick. This is an Basically, one candlestick is an entire trading day. You've got a high, you've got a low, you've got an opening price, and you've got a closing price. So what this means is that throughout the day, it opened here, but let's say it, it went down throughout the day, it bottomed, it went all the way up throughout the day to the top, but then it came back down and closed right here. So this shows you the entire day, you, you know where it opened, you know where it closed and somewhere throughout the day it hit a low and a high. That's what this candlestick and when it's green it means that it, it closed higher than it opened. Decreasing is just the opposite. You opened up and it went down and went up throughout the day and cycled through this entire candlestick and closed right here and it being a down day because the open, opening price was higher than the closing price. Now, there's certain things that you can use with candlesticks when you've got multiple days lined up. This is, it gives you indications of patterns or, or if things are gonna move up or down. What I have here are some of the most popular uh, candlestick patterns. So just to go over these, a bullish engulfing, and you'll hear me say this all the time, a bullish pattern where there are a, there is a lot of momentum in favor of of price rising. What this means is that you've got a, basically it's an expanding wedge if you look at this. This one engulfs this one in its entirety. 
And it's even stronger if this engulfs the wicks of it as well. This is, this is called the body of a candlestick. This is called the wick. The, so this one, the body of it, engulfs the entire one before it. Now bearish engulfing is the exact opposite. You have an up day and then you have a down day and the body engulfs the entire one before it. That's called an, a bearish engulfing. It's a bearish pattern where there's a lot of momentum in favor of price falling. Now they have it, Harame, all this is is, is, is a contraction. Think of it as a, as a, a sideways, um, we'll call it a sideways flag pattern where it contracts in. So that's, that's, it's, it's a neutral pattern. You've got a big body and then you've got a smaller body right next to it, right in the middle of it. Dark cloud cover means that you've got an up day. So the, the stock was coming up and you've got a body that goes over the top here. Now, dark, dark cloud cover could also be called bearish piercing. So a bearish piercing setup where it opens up above this guy and it closes below the halfway point of this pattern here. And that's what we have. This is called a bearish piercing or a dark uh, cloud cover. Here's the, the opposite. We're coming down in a pattern. It, we have a down day. It opens up below it, but throughout the day it works its way higher above halfway of this candlestick. This is called a bullish piercing or a rising sun. So patterns could be bullish or bearish depending on the context. Pattern could be bullish or bearish depending on the context. Remember all of these things. Now, then we've got a hammer or pin. This is a hammer here and this is a pin. Signals a reversal when the wick sticks out way past the surrounding prices. Price tried to go higher and was rejected for this one. It's the exact opposite for this guy. And a doji, which is just this, which means the opening and closing price are the same, is a neutral pattern which could have uh, could have different meanings based on the context of where it's at in relationship to other prices. So here is a buying opportunity. The stock's coming down this way. You just you, These are three trading days, trading day one, trading day two, and trading day three. And when you look at it, remember the opening and closing price. It opened up here and throughout the day it fell and then maybe just came back up a little and closed right here. But we had a lot of momentum coming down. This is where momentum and velocity kind of comes into play. And what happened the next day is the, the, the market opened. It opened right here. And throughout the day, they tried, someone tried selling this off, it, whatever, whoever it was. And then throughout the day, the, it reversed very hard and came all the way back and closed right here, which means the momentum is coming way up. And typically that momentum or velocity, uh, I know I haven't really talked about it too much previously, but that move created velocity and momentum to the upside. So it opened here, went all the way down throughout the day. It fought all the way back and closed up here, which then gave it the momentum to keep moving the next day. Means that there's a lot of buyers down here. That's what this means. So this is called a hammer. That's the hammer here. And it's a bullish formation. I just described to you what that formation is what the velocity and momentum is behind it. That's the reasoning why a hammer works so well and why it's a buying opportunity. And if you were to just flip this upside down, it's the same thing for selling. If you were to flip this entire pattern upside down, it would be a bearish, a bearish move. So I showed you that. Now I'm gonna show you a real chart of one of the stocks that I recommended um, that people look at when I did my financial, you know, educational purposes videos earlier. So one thing, a lot of it deals with contracting into points. You contract into points, which means that the buyers are starting to equal the sellers. We're coming to a determination or a why in the road. And it's also a form of velocity or momentum. It's in order to have great momentum or velocity, you have to have a lot of buyers or sellers you have to push something up or down. And if you have a lot of either buying power or selling power, that means there's a lot of buyers or sellers behind the stock. If something's getting absolutely sold off, it means, it, number, number one, it means a lot, a lot of people own it. 
And number two, it means you've got a lot of people selling whatever they own. At the bottom of most commodity markets, or any market for, for that matter, you're not going to have a lot of people owning these things. So they're going to be pretty illiquid. There's not going to be many sellers. There's not going to be many buyers if you're buying in what I call a dead period. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll go over what a dead period is a little bit later in this chart here. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over a couple of things. What you need to look at and remember these patterns back here that we have, because we're going to use that, and we're also going to use the size of these patterns. So the size of the pattern means how many buyers are there. It gives you an indication of velocity or momentum or buying strength. Think of it as that such. So when you look at this, what we're looking for are big, up, big bodies and big up days. So this one here, you can see it's a big candlestick here, and it's, it's very large on this up day here. It engulfs the one before it completely, almost. This I would, would consider to be a bullish engulfing pattern. I think they call it a rising, they call it a, yeah, bullish engulfing here. So we have a bullish engulfing pattern. But if you look, look at the volumes, because volume matters as well when you're looking at the charts. And again, this is a 50-day moving average, the blue line, 200-day moving average is the red line, just to let you know. Uh, and to go over this, this is relative strength indicator at the top here. So it, it tells you the relative strength over time. And this can also tell you if it's un, you know, kind of over, overbought, underbought, and whatnot, given the relative strength indicator of 30 to 70. I can go over that in an entire different clip in its, in its entirety here. But we're looking for large body, body sticks here, candlesticks. This is the body of it. The opening price is down here. The closing price is up here. And it's a very large body on it. This means we have a lot of buying pressure and we have large volume. There's a lot of buyers buying this stock. And what I look for, and this is also part of technical trading, is I look for smaller down days, which means that there's not as many sellers in the stock as there are buyers uh, of it. So this means there's a lot of buyers here and there's not nearly as many sellers on these down days. And you can see a contraction here. You can see this little contraction. It's, it's forming a flag pattern. And we'll go over those patterns later. But we're looking for buying strength, selling strength, and the, pat the candlestick patterns. Now I'm gonna show you a couple more candlestick patterns. Here's a bullish engulfing of the ones before it. And the more this engulfs the ones before it, see it's engulfs one, two, and it's even a bearish kind of, or a bullish piercing on this one. You would say that it's a stronger pattern then it's gonna probably go higher. Now it doesn't mean that the next candlesticks right behind it, they could go down a little bit and then eventually move higher. It doesn't negate it. Uh, it doesn't negate this, you know, if it goes down the next day or two days or three days. What we want to see is we want to see small down days, and they could be a little couple behind it or, or whatnot, signaling that we've got more buyers than we do sellers. So that what this looks like is we moved up, came back, and see how this pattern is within these two patterns. So we have one, two, but it took three days to move back. It means that the buying power is stronger than the selling pressure. Then we've got a nice bullish engulfing of the one before it, two, three, four. It almost engulfs all four of these, which means, man, this thing's going to go higher. But notice it didn't go higher till one, two, three, day four. So it doesn't negate, even if this goes sideways for a little bit, it doesn't mean that this pattern's negated here. It means that we're going to move higher. It's just a matter of time. So that's what I look for. I look for these big candlestick up days and uh, the pattern says that this one's gonna move higher. So we moved higher and then we sold off. Now, how long does this last for? It could, be, it could be for days, it could be for months. We don't know that. We just know that the buyers are stronger than the sellers, but we don't know for how long. That's kinda, I mean, no one's gonna know how long. We just know that the, the path of least resistance is up. Now, if you notice, you can look at this entire pattern in its entirety on this left-hand side. And you can say, look, we've got big up days everywhere, which means the buying, uh, the buying pressure is much stronger than the selling pressure based off of candlestick, the body lengths of them. So the red body lengths are all smaller than the, are ma the majority are smaller than the up day body lengths, if you were to look at all these in its entirety. Then you see this sell off. It sells off, but it's all small candlesticks. It's like water leaking out of a jug. You know, you, 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 you knock a jug over and what you see is you see it kind of just gulp out 
and then gulp out and then gulp out. And then eventually what happens is this thing kind of flatlines. And it means that there's no more cellars or no more water in the jug. It just flatlines. And when it flatlines, that's where I like to buy. That's what I call the dead period. Now, there's some things that I really want to show you here. Remember back to these patterns here. We've got a hammer, we've got a bearish, uh, bullish engulfing, and we've got a, I call this a bullish piercing. We've got many indicators here. One, we've got the bullish engulfing back here, and I just wrote it, did a, a put a line across. We've got a wick on the bottom. That's a reversal pattern, but it also means that there's buyers down here. And then it kind of salt bleed, bled off. We have a bullish piercing or a rising sun. That's what this pattern is. We have a very large candlestick here. The buyers are there. They, they're making their statement saying, we are here, boom, and they punched it. They punched this day and showed everyone how strong they are. Then there was still a little bit more sellers, so they started leaking out a little bit. And notice how this is pretty common. It has a move higher, and then it kind of comes back close to the, this bottom here. I call this the dead period because we have very small candlesticks. The opening and closing prices are very close. And then we get a bullish, a bullish engulfing here, almost. Bullish piercing, however you want to call this. It's a big up day in, in relationship to the ones be, uh, behind it. It went up, came back right to the bottom here almost, and put in a bullish engulfing right here. Remember, the bullish engulfing is when this candlestick engulfs the ones before it. That's what I have circled here. It's the one that's engulfing the one before it. That body is. Boom, higher. Bullish engulfing again. Boom, higher. Bullish engulfing again. Boom, higher. Then we've got a wick on the bottom. We've got almost a bullish piercing. Boom, higher. Now we've got a bearish uh, engulfing here. See that? And this is a little, bit, little pullback. So you can use these candlesticks, all of these, for reading charts. Now I think we'll move on at, uh, past this. Here are some reversal chart patterns cheat sheet. This is a cheat sheet that you can use to, to see some patterns. And I'll show you what some of these patterns look like. We've got a bearish double top, one, two. We've got a head and shoulders, so shoulder, head, shoulder. We've got a bearish rising wedge. We've got a bearish expanding triangle or a megaphone. We've got a bearish triple top, one, two, three. A bullish double bottom, bullish inverted head and shoulders, bullish falling wedge, which is just the opposite of these. They call this a megaphone or a bullish expanding triangle. And then we've got a bullish triple top, or triple bottom, sorry, one, two, three. So these are very, uh, we'll call it very common patterns that you see uh, in markets. And all you have to do is see where these guys are bouncing off of and try to put a line wherever they're bottoming off of. And if that line can hit a bunch of, of bottomings, uh, more than likely it's called a trend line. So the more a stock hits a line, the stronger the trend line is. So here we have a one, two, three bottom reversal pattern. This is used, or you can flip it over and it could be a, a top. But this is a huge downtrend line, and I'll show you later in the charts what this looks like. The first step is it breaks the downtrend line. The second step is it creates a higher low. So this is a lower low here. This is a higher low. So that's step number two. And then it needs to make a higher high. This is step number three. That's why it's a step three is above this high here. So step one, break the downtrend. Step two, higher low. Step three, higher high. This right here is a bottoming process which went from a bearish, you know, a, a downtrend to an uptrend. So this is what's called a new uptrend. And this is a 2B bottom. So it comes down, makes a low, comes up, makes a little bit lower low, and then you wanna buy above this. Now, sometimes I just buy on the bottom if, if we have absolutely great valuations. And if you look, you could, this wasn't quite a 2B bottom, but it was close. This is a bottom here, and this is a higher low than this one. So this reversal pattern, this one right here, remember, break the downtrend, 
high or low, and then step three is to break this. If you were to look at this pattern here and you were to draw a line across at seven, seven bucks roughly, this is the pattern that we're seeing is this is a low, this is a higher low, the downtrend was broken. We are coming up and we're trying to break this $7 mark, which puts it in a new uptrend. And I think it will do it very soon. But this pattern right here is a one, two, three bottom reversal. That's what's playing out in SM Energy. And what I did is I bought off of number two. I was aggressive as hell and bought off of number two because of the valuations. This is considered step one is to break the downtrend. Step two is right here. And step three is the break of this guy right here. So this is a, called a 2B bottom. And all it does is it tries to, the, the market tries to flush people out of this low because they usually put stop losses here. People do. It flushes them out and then it moves higher. I like buying off these if I know the market conditions and the valuations are good for a company. So this is called a 2B bottom. And you can flip it over and use it as a 2B sell as well. Now, here's a cup and handle pattern. This is also a very, we'll call it, prevalent pattern that you see when trading. Usually you have an uptrend. It hits some line here, so it hits off some resistance sells off and creates this big U-shaped pattern. The bigger the U-shaped pattern in terms of its size here means that the higher it's going to go from the breakout. This is called, uh, oh no, that's, this is a, a head and shoulders. <laughs> and here's the handle. So usually what happens is it comes down around, creates this big U-shape, and then it comes down to create the handle. And this handle, obviously it's not gonna look exactly the same as this. Sometimes they're real messy and it goes all over the place. But this is the pattern. And I'll show you in market updates this pattern when I see it. When they break to the upside, that's typically when you wanna buy and you just hold on until it hits the price target or it's a continuation pattern and you hold it uh, in a long-term uh, bull market for commodities or whatever it is. So here's VALE, just to give you an example. This, is a, this just broke its, its, its uh, downtrend. Now this is a very big downtrend. And the bigger the pattern, the bigger the upside move is going to be when it breaks it. So VALE is a commodity producer. It's been in a downtrend and the pattern started in the early 2000s. And this is like a 20 year pattern. This thing's gonna be gigantic. When it breaks this and moves to the upside, this is gonna go up many, many multiples. This could go up to a few hundred dollars even when it breaks this 40 something dollar mark. So this is looking exceptionally good. It's one of the ones that I would recommend looking into for your portfolio, but we've got a broken downtrend here. So that's something we need to notice. Now this is zoomed in on the downtrend. And remember the body, the, the, the body sticks, the bearish, uh, bullish engulfings and all that stuff. So when you look at this, I drew some lines in. So we, it hit this line, it hit this line. So that's one, two, three, four, five. There's five, five ones hitting the top line. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, six hitting this bottom line. So it's a pretty strong pattern. We've got a bullish engulfing right here. See this one, the big candlestick. Remember the bigger candlesticks means that we've got big buying power. So we have that. We've got another kind of almost bullish piercing here, almost bullish piercing. We're kind of just looking through another big bullish engulfing here. This just means that eventually this is gonna to break to the upside. If we were looking at selling pressure, we should be seeing very large down days with a lot of bearish engulfing, bearish piercing, but we're seeing all bullish stuff all through here. Now there is a bearish engulfing here and a bearish engulfing here, but I'm seeing far more larger up days sprinkled throughout than I do down days in this. And if we know that the valuations are good, I would be saying the market conditions are ripe for VALE, the valuations are ripe, I would overemphasize the up days than the down ones. And then you gotta look at volume to see where the volumes are, and they're all on the up days, these big volumes. So we broke to the upside here because we had all these bullish engulfings and stuff sprinkled all within. The buyers controlled this market. It back tested, now this is very common. You break through a chart pattern and then it back tests the top of the pattern. That happens 
a lot of the time. Maybe not all the time, but the majority of the time it back tests and I like buying off the back test. Then we moved higher. This was one of the companies that I'd recommended right when it broke out to be buying on the back test. Now the conclusion here, and we went, we went over quite a bit. Look for chart patterns and look at that cheat sheet that I have in the middle of this video to see if you can see those patterns. Look for repeated movements that can create a resistance or support line. However many times it hits that line is the strength of that support or resistance line. Think of terms of buyers and sellers, how they interact with each other, and then correlate that with the charts and the candlesticks. And keep in mind that bigger patterns means bigger moves. So this is the first technical trading kind of overview that I have, which is basically summing up candlesticks and, and how to use candlesticks. And second is to recognize some chart patterns that you see over and over in a lot of the charts that we see. Now, there's a lot more you can do in terms of seeing velocity and momentum in charts. And I don't know if many people really look at that. Those are just as important, if not more important, than just seeing a pattern. And if you can tie this together with valuations and market conditions, you can become absolutely lethal with this because then you know where the stock must go almost. I mean, it's not gonna be 100%, but you know you can cheat to one side. It's like saying that you're a right-handed shooter in hockey and you're very strong on your right side. If you have a, a, a time where you can basically use your strength on the right-hand side of, of the rink, you can come barreling down the right side, you know you're strong and you can fire that puck in the upper corner or place it better than you would on a backhand. That's what we're looking at, the market conditions. The market conditions is what you need to look at first and the valuations to get your mind set right to look at some of these charts. So that's my take on it. Uh, if you guys want more technical analysis, which I'll do more, don't worry, uh, put in the comments section what you guys want to see or what you guys are, you know, what you've learned here, what you may want me to expand on. I know this stuff somewhat well, so I can go any which direction you guys need me to go if this was not easy enough to understand. I'll do more on momentum and more on velocity and what to look for in some of these charts in terms of the body sizes and wicks and whatnot and how some of the patterns align. I'm still going to go over my market updates and show you all of these things for everyone uh, just to show you what I see. And if you look at most of this stuff, I tie it all together. So hopefully by learning this information, you can tie the market updates better and make perhaps even be able to buy and sell on your own with your, you know, with your own money to see how this pans out. So if you guys like this content, Click the thumbs up button. I appreciate you guys listening. This is Finding Value.